These red deer stags are still in velvet. They're in what we call soft antler. When they go into hard antler, they lose the velvet and their antlers become firm and ready for fighting. This change from soft antler to hard antler also alters the deer's social behaviour. Whilst these stags will graze and forage together peacefully whilst in soft antler, they will become very territorial and competitive when they're in hard antler because that's when they're fighting for control of access to females. Changes in day length and in hormonal profiles will alter when the deer sheds its velvet as well as its behaviour. So we can see very clearly the endocrine, environmental and individual control over behaviour. Larger stags are going to be more successful compared to smaller stags when it comes to competing for females. This figure just explains some of the terminology associated with the deer rut and the growth of antlers for those that might not be familiar with the terms hard and soft antler and what velvet means, which is the covering that allows the antler to grow. Here's a nice example of why, outside of the rut, stags have a very fluid social system. The larger stag on the right is grazing peacefully with the smaller, younger stag on the left. This type of association would not occur during the rut when the males are competing for females. Because antler is the fastest growing tissue in the mammalian body, it needs to be because it's used for a very specific, very short period of time. Stags outside of the rut will prioritise foraging and getting lots of energy for antler growth rather than fighting or being territorial. Change in social behaviour with season and development is not only restricted to the stags, however. Female deer or hinds also change their social system and their choice of partners in that social group based on the time of year and their physiological stage of life. After the calving season, once the hinds have had their fawns, they gather together in large groups where their youngsters are offered extra protection from many pairs of eyes. You can see a small spotty youngster in the middle of this video. The hinds will remain in these same sex groups away from the stags who are foraging ready for the rut until the rut starts and then the stags will actively compete for females and round the hinds up into harems, thus changing their social system again. Towards the end of spring, the hinds remove themselves away from any larger gatherings and become much more defensive over a particular patch of thick vegetation such as bracken. This is where they will have their youngster. They become very, very protective of their offspring and will charge away anybody that might look like a potential threat. Once the youngster is able to keep up with its mother, the hinds will then aggregate together in groups like you saw earlier on. Again, this is a change in social system based on the animal's physiology, i.e. it's going through parturition, having a youngster, it's lactating, producing milk, and on the drive for parental care. The hinds keep their fawn hidden until it's strong enough to run with the rest of the herd and therefore it can join a larger group. Therefore we come full circle. Here is a rutting stag in hard antler defending his harem of females that he has collected fighting off other males. The hinds will group together in the stag's harem for the course of the rut before going their separate ways once they are pregnant ready for the birth of their young in the following spring. This example of deer behaviour is one that is focused on a species with a highly sexually selected trait. In fact, antler might be the most sexually selected trait of anything in the animal kingdom. This drives all of the social behaviour 
of the species because they have to be really fluid and flexible in their behaviour patterns in and out of the breeding season. Let's now look at a totally different example. Species that are not sexually selected in their traits, such as this pair of mute swans with their signets, will be less flexible in their social behaviours at different times of the year. Mute swans look the same because they form their partner when they're youngsters and they remain with that partner, for the most part, for the rest of their lives. They're not actively looking for a new mate with each season, as is the case with the deer. The swan's social behaviour is going to be much more rigid and much more fixed because both partners will defend their territory. Both partners will raise their youngsters. They don't grow and develop new traits across the course of the year because they don't need to put that effort into changing their appearance to constantly attract a new partnership. There will be environmental and physiological influences on the swan's behaviour for example, the drive to build a nest and rear their youngsters in the spring, to fledging those youngsters when the youngsters leave their parental care over the summer, and the cycle repeats itself the following spring. But the flexibility of their behaviour and the amount of behaviour change that we see is going to be less extreme compared to the deer because the swans do not have that same life history strategy. If you are a species that finds a partner and remains with that partner for the duration of your life, you don't need the exaggerated displays or exaggerated traits because you've already chosen each other and therefore you've already made your decision that you're going to be attracted to this partner because the traits and behaviours that they perform when you are attracted to them look fit and suitable for the remainder of your life with them and your overall reproductive output. A key example of behaviour change in the swans will be when their signets have fledged, they have grown out of their fluffy grey down, and they've got their adult style feathers, except they will be brown rather than white. This is then the signal for the parents to drive those signets out of their territory. This is called kin dispersal, where they are removing any relatives from their territory to ensure that there are limited chances of inbreeding, diluting the diversity of the swan's gene pool by allowing close relatives to breed. So this is an example of behaviour change around the social system of the swan. Once the signets are adult size and can set up their own territories and find their own partners themselves, their parents will actively drive them out of the family home to disperse their kin far and wide to reduce any chances of inbreeding. I hope this video has provided you with some key examples of how the traits that animals carry can influence their social behaviour and how psychological, physiological and evolutionary aspects of a species life history strategy will also impact on its social behaviours as well. Thank you very much.